Welcome back. You're now watching the lifestyle segment of the weekend show. Today we'll be discussing World Population Day. July 11th is observed as World Population Day globally. And this year the theme is focused on women and girls around the world and their health and rights issues. Joining us in the studio to discuss this, we have... Margaret Edison. She is the Deputy Director of Planning at the National Population Commission. Welcome to the weekend show, Ma. Thank you for having me. You're most pleasure. welcome. The theme <laughs> this year is centered around women and girls, how to safeguard the health and rights of women and girls around the world. Why is this theme so important, given the current situation we find ourselves in all across the world with the COVID-19 pandemic? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, like you have um, mentioned, the theme for this year is putting uh, bricks on COVID-19 how we can safeguard the health and um, rights of women now. And it's, it's very critical because when COVID started, it was seen basically as a health issue. But as things unfold leading to lockdown, we saw it playing out on so many things in the lives of people. And you know, in situations of war, pandemic, it is women and girls that are mostly affected. So it started playing out when the lockdown came in and um, having access to like sexual and reproductive health services. Women that were pregnant maybe would have needed to go to hospital for antenatal care they would be in labor and had to go to the hospital to have their bed delivery and many other things. So the, the lockdown really opened up the inequality mm. that exists. It opened up how people were, nations and people were affected inequal, um, unequally. Mm -hmm. So the issue of sexual and reproductive health became prominent because it affects women at home, it affects women and girls in humanitarian setting, it affects women uh, who are the who form the larger population of um, healthcare workers who are the who are the frontliners mm -hmm. in saving lives during the COVID. So and um, they were affected disproportionately. And um, it, it, you know, so it drew attention, particularly from the UN level, to UNFPA, how this had become a critical issue. Because the focus was just on saving the lives of people that are affected by COVID, but forgetting the rest of the population. And healthcare facilities were closed to the rest issues and focus on those affected by COVID. So at the end of the day, it was discovered that the rest of the population are hardly hit. You know, um, and like you rightly said, at the beginning of this pandemic, it was reported that oh, the larger share of um, people who are frontline healthcare workers are women. And so that was a concern. But according to UNFPA research this year, they've said about 47 million women globally will be affected if um, the lockdown continues for another six months. And that because they will not have access to contraceptives. And this is birth control, family planning, which could result into another 7 million unplanned pregnancies. Exactly. Um, and that has already started happening. Mm -hmm. Coming back to Nigeria and developing nations, how are we using this information we have to ensure that with our planning, women who are in need of these services can actually have access to the contraceptives which they need? Thank you very much. Um, the National Population Commission is um, the um, core ministry, core government agency that um, anchors population and development issues and that the issue of family planning falls on the rate right indirectly. And um, with all this information coming out, and um, we also play the role of advising the government 
on emerging issues on population and development and um, the impact of COVID-19 on the sexual and reproductive health of women and girls is also a part of population and development. So it, 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 it has opened our eyes onto what is happening currently and what will happen in long term if actions are not taken now. So on our part, we will advise the government based on data. You know, you cannot just tell government, oh, women are dying or they don't have access. So one of the key roles we play and we are continuing to play is to collate, collect data, disaggregate data from national to state level to local government level to community level, then by sex and many other variables to be able to advise government. This is what has been discovered. And the figure you are quoting is, is mostly on low income and middle income countries, which Nigeria falls into it. And if you come within the context of Africa, you know that Nigeria will come up with more affected women and girls because we, are, we were already having critical and challenging issues in terms of maternal health. You know, 512 uh, maternal dead to 100,000 live births already existing. And on met needs scaled up between 2013 and 2018 NDHS, which reported that 19%, almost 20% of our women are experiencing unmet needs in family planning. And that played out on adolescence between the ages of 15 and 19. We're already pregnant or mothers, 19% of them. And that contributes, play out on maternal health issues. So it's, it's really needs attention of government and everybody to come together to find innovative ways on how to address these critical issues. What are some of the major issues that the National Population Commission wishes to draw the public's attention to on July 11th every year? All around the world, we understand that we are being drawn to observe this World Population Day, but what are the issues that we are being drawn to understand and to appreciate across the world. Okay, we know each year has a team and we have the team for this year which is putting breaks on COVID-19. Why? So that we can know how we can safeguard the health and the right of women and girls now. So one of the key things that we do is to raise awareness. Raise awareness on the needs of women and girls, their sexual and reproductive health needs, to raise awareness on their vulnerability, to also highlight how we can safeguard those needs, how we can um, provide those needs, how we can safeguard their health and needs, how to, uh, last year, um, November, the whole world gathered in Nairobi where we made commitments to ensure zero on met needs for family planning by 2030, to achieve zero um, um, tolerance for gender-based violence and harmful practices against um, women and girls, and also zero mat uh, preventable maternal death. And Nigeria was one of the countries to make that commitment. So we are here and looking at what is playing out from COVID is affecting that um, fulfilling or realizing that commitment, it is affecting the momentum we accelerated in Nairobi. So the National Population Commission is at the center of raising awareness that if we don't put brakes on COVID and look back and safeguard the needs, the sexual and reproductive health of women and girls in Nigeria, then we may not 
be able to achieve those three critical zeros in Nigeria. And um, like you said, if we are going to have seven, th seven million unintended pregnancies, already we are crying of a rapid growing population. So if we have seven million, I'm sure by the time we break that down, Nigeria is going to take a huge part of that. Mm. And that will contribute to a rapid population growth. That will contribute to high um, maternal, preventable maternal death. That will result in adolescent, um, and, uh, adolescent and teenage pregnancies in Nigeria. And that will heighten or explode gender-based violence. Already we are seeing it. A lot of rape going on and from what we we see it's already about 700 almost 800 rape cases are already officially reported there are some that are not reported so it's going to affect and uh, making progress at achieving the 2030 agenda so um it's, it's good you just mentioned um sexual based violence because um the forecast is that especially with covid 19 and if the lock lockdown um, continues globally there will be an additional 31 million cases of sexual based violence yes. in nigeria we've seen reports like you said cases of rape have increased and this doesn't even talk about other forms of abuse which is mm -hmm. already ongoing how can we use population data, especially with um, the constant rural urban migration, to help prevent and stop some of these practices, seeing that we have the figures, we have the forecast. How can we use this data to help put brakes on these COVID. trends and yes. COVID? Like I said, data is the starting point. I, the National Population Commission is at the center of making this data available. So we will we take that responsibility to ensure that data on gender-based violence, data on other indicators like the maternal death are made available to the public, to the government, to be able to identify people like you mentioned the rural urban in the rural level in the urban level, at the community level, at the, in the humanitarian setting. We, we, we will work with our partners, with the UNFPA, and all the stakeholders, with the Federal Ministry of Health, with the uh, NBS, and many other stakeholders who are engaged in all these three levels of sexual and reproductive health issues, in contraception, in gender-based violence, in maternal health, to ensure that we collate data, we produce data. You know, countries are still trying to come up with disaggregated data that are specifically spelling out how, what impact COVID has caused on the life of women in the areas that we are looking at under this year's World Population Day. So we are still working on how to collate and bring out this data. And the moment this data is available, because we are looking at a regional and global data now. So mm -hmm. now we need to have country data disaggregated, because if you don't add disaggregate this data, you cannot use them. So mm. the National Population Commission is working seriously to ensure we have that quality disaggregated data to advise government at all levels and also sensitize people that this is what is going on. When people see data, they know that the data speaks, is evidence, data is evidence. So, so they will have the evidence and it will help in planning interventions to put bricks. Just to be clear, you said um, we will and we are planning. Does it mean this hasn't started? The, the partnership with stakeholders, UNFPA, the ministries which you've mentioned, your commission. So just to be clear, has this process started or is it going to start? You know, just before the, 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 in, um, the COVID setting, the National Population Commission launched the um, Ni uh, Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey where we had at least 
very current data on the situation on sexual and reproductive health mm. uh, of women in Nigeria. And that, for me, forms the baseline data upon which we can now study the changes that have happened from COVID, from the in onset of COVID and thereafter. So we have a base data, which is the uh, uh, Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey already disseminated. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yes, it's all okay. right. We Do we have uh, a national adolescent health policy in Nigeria? Yes, we have. So this also it's falls under? No, no. It, that is anchored by Federal Minister of Health. Okay. Yeah. So how do you work in partnership with them to ensure that the vulnerable population in our society are also being able to benefit from initiatives like okay. this? You know, through the, the Nigeria Demographic and Health Service, we collect a lot of data on adolescents, on women, on children between the ages of 15 mm -hmm. to 49. And it's upon that data that the Federal Ministry of Health developed its policy of intervention. So we produce the base data uh -huh. for other stakeholders use in formulating policies to do intervention. So the National Population Commission then, Dodd, you play a very integral role because we've seen um, that in Africa in general, we come up with phenomenal policies on everything from health issues to gender issues to economic policies, but the implementation is always a problem. So what are some of the lacunas that you've observed in the system that has hindered you from being able to see that data being translated to tangible um, outcomes? So um, one of the um, challenges we have in use of data is that we, we, have, we still have to do a lot of work to enlighten stakeholders within the government, outside the government, on the importance of using data. The data is there, but the usage is still at a, a, a low level. Mm. So the National Population Commission does advocacy. We advocate. We sensitize. We create awareness on the need and the importance of using the data we produce so that those data will form evidence to guide policy, to guide intervention, to guide implementation of government aspirations, to guide the government in saying, okay, this is how it is, and this is what we should do. So the National Population Commission keeps on making we're creating awareness. For instance, we, we have a revised um, national population policy, but it's still yet to be approved by Mr. President for implementation. And it's, it's, I would call it a global policy because it has everything about every human being in Nigeria, from zero age to the old age. We have provisions in the policy on what to do, emerging issues, what are the things to do to safeguard the sexual and reproductive health of women, girls, young people. You know, when we talk of um, reproductive health, it's not just getting pregnant and having children. It has to do with reproductive health issues of old people. It has to do with reproductive health issues of men and women not just getting pregnant and having children. So reproductive health is a wide range mm. of issues and family planning is one of it. So we are working assiduously to ensure people get to appreciate the use of the data we produce. Okay, so um, just to follow up with what Osasu has said, we do, like you have also admitted, have brilliant policies. We do have data. Nigeria has a lot of data which is being collected, but as the average Nigerian watching at home, they're curious, where is this data housed? Where can we find this data? And I know the Bureau of Statistics has a beautiful portal with a lot of information, but with the work which you're doing, so do you um, share or warehouse this data in a separate place, or is this, can be, this be gotten from the Bureau of Statistics? 
how can we have access to some of this data? For the average Nigerian who wants to do research, who wants to also contribute in um, the change of some of this? Okay, we, we have a website. Okay. and we have a data on it. But researchers sometimes ask for data outside the general ones that we place for everyone to see. And those ones, they come to us, they write to us, or they come personally and request for us to, to produce those data that will meet their needs. Okay. So we have both on the platform, uh, National Population Commission platform, and we also have people coming in to ask for the data. And we also send our publications to stakeholders, to the government. Like the DHS was widely disseminated to the, gov to the state's government, to the national level, to the National Assembly, um, to schools, to different segments, to the private sector. So we send out the report, and they are free. We don't sell them. Okay. Mrs. Margaret Edison, Deputy Director, Planning for the National Population Commission. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. Thank you. And we wish you a happy World Population <laughs> Day. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say that um, the National Population Commission is very, very um, ha happy to be here today. I'm here to represent the Acting Chairman, the Honorable Federal Commissioners, and the Director General here. And above all, I'm here to represent the women and girls whom we are he gathered here to safeguard the sexual and reproductive health need. And we have to start that safeguarding now. Thank you thank so you very much. much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we'll take a short break. When we return more on the weekend show, don't forget the lifestyle segment of the weekend show is brought to you by Holo Crunch. Crunchy, yummy oh, goodness. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs>